Hey guys, thanks again for joining us here at New Life Church. We thank you for being a part of the extended family. As you can see, it's Christmas time and we are preparing for Advent. If you don't know what Advent is, it is the preparation of someone significant coming into this world. And that's the story that we tell about Jesus Christ. We all know about Jesus coming as a baby, but what we're going to be emphasizing is his second coming and us being prepared for his second coming, us living our lives every day as if Christ was going to come back that day. Now, I don't know about you, but if your schedule is anything like mine during the Christmas season, you can get so caught up and your calendar can get so full that you neglect and you overlook the importance of the Christmas season. We are challenging you this year throughout every Sunday of December to join us right here as we focus on the advent of Christ by looking at the scriptures and not just talking about Jesus as a baby, but talking about Jesus coming the second time as our Lord and our King. Are you prepared to meet Jesus Christ the second time? I truly hope so. That's our prayer at New Life Church. So every time you see one of these messages, share it on Facebook, share it wherever it is that you can share it so that we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ out to as many people as possible. Again, thank you so much for joining us here and thank you for being in the extended part of the New Life Church. God bless. We started with our service this morning. We got a lot going on today. We're gonna go ahead and go along with the Advent. Okay, any kids three to nine want to go to Super Church by having a party back there, so a lot of you might want to go. Um, like I say, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning and just want to welcome everybody and thank you so much for coming. Uh, I'm going to read uh, John 1, 10 through 14. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth. Though he lived with them and reached out to them, some did not recognize him. Though he came to his own, they turned him away. How tragic, how heartbreaking, how intense the pain must have been for God when those who should have known who Jesus was just walked on by. This is a tale of a great tragedy. Yet even in this great tragedy, there is great hope. Even in his tragedy, there is great joy. For those who do receive him, for those who do believe in his name, they are given a significant right. They are given the right to become children of God. The right is not biological. This is right not to uh, genetic code. This right is purely of God. They are by right made spiritual children of God. They are, as Jesus said, born again when they believe. While many tragically walk on by, there are those who stop and take a second look. They do not walk on by. Each of us is given this opportunity to stop and take a second look. Today we receive we are convinced by the sp scripture and teaching of God's word that for those who believe in the light, for those who believe in Jesus Christ, they become children of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we just come to you this morning. We thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house today, to come and to hear your word and to see these children dedicated. And we just ask that you would come and you would be with us and lead us and guide us in our services. We just ask you bless us upon each and every person that's here. And Lord, we just uh, are looking to you to move today and just give us the guidance that we need. Move upon our brother to give him the right words to say and every thought that he has. And Father, we just look to you and we lift you up and glorify you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning and to be able to look around and see all of you guys here. Uh, this, this is one of my favorite, favorite times of the Christmas season. Brother Leonard's going to light our third Advent candle. For those of you that have been here throughout all the weeks of Advent, you remember that Advent is the preparation of somebody significant coming into the world or into our lives. And I think all of us would agree that Jesus is pretty significant, no doubt. We're going to sing about him today and uh, things will be done just a little bit different today because we're here to dedicate to God the children that are in our lives, the gifts that God has given to us and what better gift has been given to us than Jesus Christ. Amen. So we want to invite you. We know some of you are holding babies and all that kind of stuff. That's cool. You don't have to stand up if you don't want to. We invite the rest of you too to stand up with us and Whenever we're done with this cert, with this song, we're going to take up our offering and then we'll have one more song and then we're going to move right into our service. We have a lot of stuff that's going to do, be happening today and uh, we just welcome all of you for coming and thanking, thanking you for coming and being with us. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Let's stand this morning. Father, I just love you and I want to thank you, God, for giving us another day, another time, another hour to be able to set aside to come into your house to worship you. And what a day, what a time that we have to be here. Father, Christmas is so special. It's just like the song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And I believe that. Not because we get to decorate a church and we get to buy presents and all those different things. That's not what it's about. God, it's the most wonderful time of the year because that's when you came into the world and changed history. You changed everything. And so it's worth singing about. It's worth rejoicing over. And we thank you today for that. Remind us today through song that it's Christmas. Today is a part of the Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope y'all enjoy this medley we were singing today. Just a bunch of old songs that are put together, guys.
Over the hills and everywhere go Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere go Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born get my blood pumping this morning. Amen. We're going to have our ushers come. We're going to go ahead and take our morning offering this morning. Father, we just love you today and we thank you, thank you, thank you for Christmas. We thank you for giving us the great gift of Jesus Christ, the gift that you sent to us so long ago that would change our lives forever. I don't think that anybody had a clue as to how big of a gift that you were going to give to us when you gave your one and only son, Jesus. And Lord, today we recognize him as being a baby that was born to us. But Father, as we've been going throughout this Advent season, God, we are reminded that it's not your birth that we should be preparing for. It's your return. That's what we should be preparing for. Lord, And it's the second coming of Christ. That's what's so important. And I just pray, God, that all of us would be ready, that all of us would be prepared. For when Jesus Christ splits those eastern skies, when the trumpet sounds, that we would be ready. No matter what we think about what's going to happen at that point, that, that doesn't matter. We just need to be ready when you come. And Father, our communication, our relationship between you and us, that's what helps us to know that we're ready to meet you. It's all about a relationship. It's about being a believer, a follower of Christ. And that's what we pray for, for every person that's gathered here today. Those that are local right now, those that are watching on the internet, that's what we pray for them right now, that your spirit would come and be with them in a powerful and mighty way. And so Lord, as we enter into this next part of our service, as we give of the things, the bounty that you've given to us, I pray, Heavenly Father, that it would be used to glorify the kingdom of God. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, church.
That is one of my favorites right there. Now I think I got a new favorite person to sing. That was good. You all right? We ready? Ready to go? Guys, it is a blessing to be here today. Uh, I wasn't here last week because Katrina and I were celebrating uh, a vacation together out in Jamaica. And it was really nice. And uh, I had people asking me about my tan. And I was trying to show them my tan line. And then they, <laughs> they well, I'll, I'll just stop right there. But I'm just kidding. I didn't really try to do that. I just offered. You know, they just didn't want to do it. Hey, but I told y'all about two weeks ago, this has been a, this, I knew it was going to be a good Christmas. Now, now, I don't know how many of y'all can see this, but look at this. Can y'all see that? Those are Santa Jaws socks. Santa Jaws socks. So you can't have Christmas, so I need to walk around the rest of the day like this. And this is how we're going to take our baby dedication pictures. Is that all right with y'all? It's all right with y'all? Well, I tell you, I, this, has been a, this has been so fun, the Christmas season. It's just been fun, and, uh, and all the things that have happened. And like I've told you guys before, this is one of my favorite times of the year, being able to gather in the church and to have a baby dedication service. Now, uh, we need to go ahead and get this out front. And center, anytime you have kids involved, it don't go right, okay? Weddings, parties, it's just something's going to mess up. So if, y'all, if, if something messes up, don't worry about it. Just keep rolling. We do that every Sunday up here, and we just keep going, and y'all don't even know it. You might know it, but we just keep going as if you just overlook it. So just overlook it. So welcome, 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 and thank you for coming. Some of you are visitors. You've, you've never been here before. This is your first time to come. You have other churches, other places, uh, and, and that's, that's perfectly fine. And we want to thank you for breaking away from your church and your time with your other church family and coming here and supporting your family as they dedicate their babies and, and, and show their commitment to their children and to their churches for serving God and, and using God's church and His people in the nurture and admonition of raising their children up. And that's one of the good things about it. So if there seems to be a commotion around the church today and it's just uneasy and it's not normal and it's loud and it's rustle and bustle, just get over it. Because there's babies in here. And if you want to get practice on how to calm that down, we're signing people up for the nursery today. So we'll, we'll let, you, let you get in there and we'll, we'll let you get some practice on that. And I promise you at the next baby dedication service, it will not bother you. It, you'll be perfectly fine. We'll, we'll, we'll strain all that out of you. But I remember one of my old buddies, he, he told me one time, his old pastor friend of mine, he said, you know, Joey, if the babies ain't crying, that's how he said it. I know it's not correct English, but he said, if the babies ain't crying, then the church is dying. That's what he said. And what I'm so thankful for is that here at New Life Church, we've not had a quiet service in quite a while. There's, there was 19 of these kids uh, dedicated last year. And there was 14 signed up today, but four of them can't be here because they're sick. So we'll have another baby dedication service whenever they get well. Uh, we'll, we'll put them in, in here. But I don't think there's a better, a better scripture that I could start this service off with than this one right here. It's in Matthew 19, 14. Let, Jesus said this, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. This is the purest of pure right here. This is as pure as it gets. Don't hinder the kids from coming to me, Jesus said. And if you read on down in verse 15 of that passage, the Bible says that Jesus laid hands on these children and prayed for them. What do you think happened to them kids? Huh? I don't, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. But I promise you and guarantee you when we get to heaven, there's going to be some of us running up to those saying, are you one of them kids that Jesus prayed for that day? One of them, you one of them kids? Because, man, who knows the presence of God that came into those kids' life because Jesus touched them and prayed for them. And that's what we're hoping and praying for today. So what better time to have it? it just is, this is, seems like a perfect time, and that's why we've kind of chosen Christmas time uh, to be the time that we have our dedication service because what better time for us to dedicate our children than when Jesus Christ came and God dedicated Him to us? We've just kind of put that together. So as we go through this service, I know there may be some of you here today who have never dedicated a child and you say, man, I wish I'd have known more about this or uh, you might be watching on the internet or whatever and people are like, I wish I'd have had a chance to be there. You can. 
Just because you're not signed up and everything is official and there's a package with your name on it doesn't mean that you can't do the same thing that these others are doing today. You can do it right where you are. So if you guys are watching out there on the internet, go on in the other room and get your baby and bring it in there with you and we'll get all this taken care of right here, right now today. So my question I want to start off with today is not just geared to all of you guys as parents that are dedicating your children, but all of you. Have you ever given your child back to God? And I know some of you are like, man, I didn't know there was a return policy on them. I knew I'd have done it if I could. I took them back to the service desk. That's not really what we're talking about. We're kind of talking more about have you brought them back to God? Have you given them back to God? During the excitement of the pregnancy, there is this decorating of the baby room. We, we read Dr. Dobson's books of how we're supposed to raise our children, rear our children. Do we spank them or not spank them? Or what do, we, what do we feed them or don't feed them? What time do you put them to bed? And you know, about the sixth month into this, you realize that Dr. Dobson's got some good ideas, but he's not going to teach you how to raise a child. You realize right then that the first child is the one that teaches you how to raise a child. And, they, and the, the second child's got it easy because you were broken in on the first one, you know. That's why I think God just gives a little extra grace to the first child because he knows that he's going to need it because he's the one that is, is, is breaking the parents in. And so those of you that are first, kid, first children, you're the firstborn, you know, there's a special place for you in heaven. You know, keep that in mind. There's a special place for you. You know, back in the day when you were, when you were uh, just dating and courting young ladies, you, you, you took great pride in the way that you looked. Your hair had to be just right and make sure the clothes were right. Everything was pressed and all that kind of stuff. And today, you've got a child and you just want to make sure that there's no spit up on you. That's about the extent of it. Throw your hair into a ponytail and rock and roll down the, down the road. Back in the day, you know, when the, the boys, the guys, you know, you wanted to kick back in the easy chair and watch the football games, and now you're holding a baby like a football, singing songs that you wouldn't dare get caught singing in front of the boys. That's how, that's how child children coming into our, into our lives, that's how it changes us. But, you know, whenever we become fathers and we become moms and, and we start living our life with the responsibility that we're raising these children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, we really don't care what everybody else thinks. Because deep down inside of us, there is this amazing characteristic that God placed in moms and dads, male and female, to raise children. And whenever that happens... You really don't care what happens around you. You're not worried about what's happening with all the people because that child becomes your focus now. Some of you that only have one child whenever that child was just born, how many of you remember that when that child entered into this world in the very first moment, it just changed your life? I remember that. I've got two now, but when Colson was born, I remember how my life changed. And I remember how all of a sudden I went from a boy to a more serious boy. I wanted to say a man, but that didn't go right because I've proven that it, that didn't happen that day. But it changes you, doesn't it? It really does change you. Now, I think it's safe to say that a baby really changes everything in our life. It changes everything in our church. It changes everything in the universe because a baby entered into the world, his name was Jesus Christ, and changed everything. And it changes the way that we do life. Because if it was not for a baby, where would we be? But Whenever I ask you the question, have you ever given your child back to God? What I'm asking you is this. Parents, have you recognized your child as a precious gift from the Lord? Have you recognized that your child belongs ultimately and always to God first, not to you? Have you ever realized that in order for you to be a good parent, you have to release ownership of your child and give that child back to God? Understanding that God is responsible for the way in which they were designed and that He already knows the plan and the purpose for their future. Have you ever thought about the gravity of it all, that God has left it up to you to show your child the truth of God? Have you understood that God in His sovereignty has given you the responsibility and the honor of raising a child and to teach them about Him? Boy, I bet you when we are just out there playing around, we don't ever think about that, do we? 
But that's what it's all about. A child coming into your care and your responsibility so that you would be mature father, mature mother enough to raise them in the way that God would have you to raise them. Are you always going to get it right? No, you're not. You're going to make more mistakes than you can count. There's going to be people that's going to tell you, you know, you ought to do this and you ought to do that. And you're going to get mad. You're going to say, well, I'm a mama. I know what to do. And you're going to get mad and you're going to get aggravated. And you're going to say, well, you know, dad, you could do a better job of this, that, and the other. You know what? How many of us have, have, have realized that we could have done a better job in a lot of things? But as we raise a child, they show us and they teach us what we're supposed to do. It's just an awesome thing how that God in his, in his providence and in his ability sends a baby who has not the ability to speak or to walk or to change itself or feed itself. Yet God gives us that child to teach us how to be like him. 1 Samuel chapter 1, there was a woman named Hannah who was much like many of you moms here today. She prayed and prayed and prayed and wanted a child. And this is what it says in verse 27. I prayed for this child. And the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Hannah gave her child back to God. And God used Samuel, which was the child's name, in mighty, mighty ways. I wonder why people don't take advantage of having their children in church. Why don't people take advantage of having their children in church? I really want you to ponder that thought for a moment. There's a bunch of hypocrites down there. We can always use another one. Just come on and help us out, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's really a foolish excuse. Why don't they take advantage of having their children in church? Well, they, they, they're not doing things right down there. Well, how right are you doing them by yourself? Well, you might be doing it pretty good. Yes, yeah, right. And I'm not, I've never, ever been one to say that we're going to get it all right here. And there's pastors at other churches and uh, other people at other churches that are trying, and they're not going to get it right either. They're not going to get it all right all the time. But when have any of you parents gotten it all right at all the time? But yet, whenever we come together as a church, the way that God instituted and, and constructed the church in the beginning, it was for us to be coming together as a community of believers to help one another grow. Why don't we raise our children in church? Well, I'm too stressed out, Brother Joey. I'm too busy. I've got too many things oppressing me and pulling me aside and, and bringing me in and out and all these types of things. There may be people right now who were too busy, too busy to get their children dedicated in a church service. You ever thought about it? And I'm not, you know, it, well, that's fine. If you want to get your baby dedicated or not, that's fine. You're going to find out here in a minute it has nothing to do with a baby anyway. But we're too busy and we get so busy doing things that we neglect raising our children up in the way that God would have them. I want you to ask yourself this question. Think about it. Think about Jesus' birth, Christmas, you know, the little nativity. Think, think about what happened there. Do you think Joseph and Mary were a little bit stressed out? Joseph frantically looking for a bed so that Mary could give birth to her firstborn son. Walks up to the motel of that day and there's no rooms in the motel. They called it an inn. But they couldn't get in because there were no rooms. And so they're going to walk away. Maybe the innkeeper said, hey, you know, if you don't mind sleeping in a stable, a manger, a barn. I got a place for you. And Mary's like, Joseph, I don't care where you get me, but you better get me somewhere because this is fixing to happen. And so they go, do you, do you think the stable was Mary's, you know, this is, this is mama, this is child number uno, number one. Do you think that she really wanted to have her baby in a, in a manger? You think maybe that Bethlehem General Hospital would have been a better choice? But they didn't have that. They didn't have it. So, so she has to give birth to her baby in a manger in the conditions that were not suitable at all, at least by our standards. Do you think they were stressed out? You think they were stressed whenever Herod starts sending his soldiers through the city to kill every child that was there? I don't, would that have stressed any of y'all parents out? That soldiers are coming through slaughtering children in your town because the king was worried 
that the prophesied Messiah, the king, had been born and he was going to wipe them out. Think it stressed them out? What do you think whenever they had to run away to Egypt just so that their baby could live? Think it, it, just, it stresses us out having to leave from the hospital to the house. But they have to get up and move to a completely different place. You see, today we're fighting the same thing that Mary and Joseph fought. You see, this world is not making room for Christ. Just like it didn't make room for Christ back then. And today, the world is trying to snuff Christ out of our culture, and they're doing it one child at a time. Just like Herod did. One child at a time. And if you don't believe that's true, the statistics say that in 10 years, and this has been almost 15 years ago when Barna said this, in 10 years, if things don't change, any child 17 and under will not know who God is. And whenever I walk around and talk to kids, you ever heard of Jesus? They say, no, sir, who is that? They don't know who he is. They're doing it one child at a time. You see, the devil's not worried about hitting you as an adult. Whenever you look, you look at you and you're, here you are 50 and 60 years old and up, and you, you think, boy, well, the devil, yeah, I know it's, it's struggles and, and you're having a hard time, but I'm here to tell you today that you are not on the devil's number one radar. It's these little ones right here. Why? Because if he can get into their mind and he can corrupt their mind and their thinking, then in 10 and 20 years, you'll be dead and gone and he'll have them to rule the world. You see what I'm saying? Do you think it's important for you to put your children in the right places so that they can hear God, so that they can hear Bible teaching? That's why I don't understand why we don't take advantage of the church helping us raise our children in the way that God would have them to go. What a responsibility today, guys, that you have to protect your child. And, and today you bring them before the Lord. And whether you know it or not, today in a dedication service, you come to bring your child back to God. You're bringing your child back to God. And that's what we want to do. And we want to help you do that. So the world is going to stress you. The world is going to oppress you. But with God's leading and the church's help, you can raise a child in the way that God would have you to raise them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce you guys to the church so that they can know who your baby is. Just like the angel announced Jesus, I'm going to be the angel and I'm going to announce your baby. I know you was expecting more, but this is all you got. I'm doing the best I can, you know. So what we're going to do is all of you, we, we had 14 children that were going to be dedicated today, but four of them are not here because they're sick, but I want all of you. And if any of you uh, parents or grandparents, if y'all would like to come up with them, you can, but we're going to have all of you come up here at the same time. So we're just going to stretch out across the, across the stage and just get tight if you have to, however you want to do it, but so that you don't feel uh, alone and by yourself, we're going to let you stand up here with everybody else. And I'm going to stand right down there and I'm going to look back up at you and I'm going to talk to you, and I'll instruct you. So if you guys will, start making your way up here. Get all their clothes straightened out and stuff, and there will be someone in the back taking pictures, and uh, you'll be able to pick them up on Facebook here in just a little while. And the rest of you church, whenever you start seeing all these babies, you're going to wonder why we're signing people up in the nursery. Because the nursery is growing. You know, I was thinking the other day about, about the way our church has grown with, with children and with, with parents and adults. I was thinking about it the other day, and I really got to thinking, you know, if, if things keep going the way they're going, and if all these kids stay here, the ones that are back there now, our youth group, if they all stay here, we have 20 more solid years of, of strong, healthy church membership if they all stay here. So what we're doing is we're giving out scholarships, and if you take them, you have to serve for at least 20 years here locally before you move off. Hey, don't they look good, y'all? Look at all of them. Yeah, beautiful. Now, what you have to understand is that although this has traditionally been called a baby dedication service, it has nothing to do with a baby. This has to do with you as a parent, being willing to put that child in a place to where that child can recognize who God is. And this is what I'm fixing to declare to you, that if you are willing as parents to do that, then you'll just say, we will, or we do. And I'll, I'll instruct you through all that. But I want you to read with me this scripture, Deuteronomy 6, beginning in verse number 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, 
the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you give up. Now, we put that in Louisiana terminology, do it all the time. You do this all the time. It doesn't make any difference where you are or what situation it is. It says, tie them as symbols on your hands, bind them on your forehead, and write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Everywhere that you are, everything that you do should be about teaching your children who God is. You guys believe that? Have you understood the importance of that? Now, parents, I want to ask you, will you make this vow today? Will you make a vow today by coming forward before God in this church? Do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and your children to the Lord? Will you declare that you will do your best to raise your child in a healthy Christian home, praying always that God will use them and set them apart for His service? If so, respond by saying, we do. Thank the Lord. Now, having come freely today, I ask now, parents, that you enter into the following commitment in the presence of God and in the presence of this congregation. So that your children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you as parents vow by God's help and in the partnership with the church to provide these children a Christian home of love and peace. To raise them in the truth of our Lord's instruction and discipline. And to encourage them one day to trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you agree, say we do. Now I want to introduce these children to you. And whenever I call your name guys, just step forward. And I'm going to give you a package and then, and then go right back. Hey, don't worry about all that. This, this, I, told them, I told them before that somebody's going to be crying. Don't stress out over it. Hey, if anybody has a problem with it, just hand her off to them and say, say you do something about it. I told you, it's always going to be that way. Don't, don't worry about that. This is, hey, we, if the babies ain't crying, then the church is dying. So we're all for it. So whenever I call your name and I hand you this certificate, if you would, just walk up right here. The lady in the back is going to take a snapshot of you. I'll get out of the way, and everybody else is going to recognize you. But church, please hold your applause until we've called all the names, okay? Here we go. And if I say the name wrong, don't get mad at me, all right? I graduated from, well, I ain't going to tell you. All right. Am I saying this right? Mary Mar Lee is Barthol. What? Marley. Marley Barthol. Y'all would. Look at that pretty baby. Look at the camera right there. You know, we used to would print these pictures off for you, but it's up to you now. It'll be on Facebook. So you... <laughs> Annalise Rose Murray. Hey, is she the is she the newest? Oh, y'all have the new newest born, don't you? The youngest one. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful family. Hunter Lane Woodson. Here we go. Mr. Hunter. Congratulations, guys. Mr. Isaac Harrell. Did I say it right? Isaac? Okay. It's all right. Anna Lee Brooks. Here we go. You're going to accept it for him, man. Well, stand right there and look at the camera. They're going to take a picture of you. Mr. Bo West. <laughs> Smile big, Bo. Smile big, Bo. Give him a thumbs up, Bo. <laughs> All right, Tucker Green.
Not to be confused with number 22 in the Cowboys, Emmett Smith. We're not going to confuse him. This is Emmett Elliott, right? Emmett Elliott Smith. And I believe this is the youngest baby that's been born recently, I think. Congratulations, guys. All right, here we go. Serenity and Gabriel. Kelly, Mr. Russell. Hey, Serenity. Hey, Serenity. Serenity. Hey, baby girl. You want this? Here. Here. Now look. Hey, Serenity, look right there. Look. Say, hey, I love Jesus. Y'all give them all a round of applause. Now hold still one minute, okay? Hold still. Because now uh, we have to go to the next part. Because you guys can come up here and do anything like this, and you can say, hey, we want to raise our children in church and all this kind of stuff. And you can say, New Life is the greatest church, and this is where I want to be. But you know what? If there's not a church body that's willing to support you, this is pointless. Okay? Now, what we always have failed to mention or what we fail to recognize as a church, and, when, and I don't know about you guys, but whenever I grew up in church, what we would do is we would invite people to come to church and we would have them come down to the altar. We'd pray over them, thank God you're saved, and we'd leave the back door open, push them out it, and never disciple them and never give them any instruction or anything like that. What good are we doing as a church if we do not help give our people instruction? Discipleship. Church, it starts with you. So if you would, stand. If you consider yourself part of God's church, not new life, part of God's church. There's an old proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. Parents have the first responsibility, but parents need help and support from the community. And at New Life Church, as a pastor, my heart's desire is to build a community here to where people start seeing each other in town, in the marketplace, and they recognize not because they're a family member, but because they are part of the community of God, the kingdom of God. That's what we're trying to do. So by being present today in the house of God, do you hereby declare yourself to be the children of God because you trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sins and the gift of eternal life? If you believe that Jesus Christ is the reason and the definition for eternal life, say, we do. Church, having come freely, I ask now that you make the following commitment to the people that are behind me today. So that these children may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers. Do you vow by God's help to be faithful in your calling as members of the body of Christ? To help these parents be faithful to God. And to help teach and train these children in the ways of the Lord. That they might one day trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. If you agree, please say we do. Right behind you, there's a bottle of oil right there. I need that bottle of oil. Now comes my favorite point. I'm going to anoint every one of you babies. And I'm going to say just a quick little prayer over them because uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, I just want you guys to know that I'll never be perfect. I'll never do everything right. But I promise you, as long as you want me to be your pastor, I'll fight for you. And I'll storm the gates of hell standing beside you praying for you and your children. Because I believe without a shadow of a doubt that the world is out to destroy our children. And I'll battle right along with you. Brother Frank, if you would, make your way up. Serena, I want to anoint you in the name of the Lord. May God bless you and lengthen the days of your life. May God bless you and lengthen the days of your life. God bless you and lengthen the days of your life. Pray the Lord would bless you and lengthen the days of your life. This is a blessing. Lord bless you, baby. Multiply your days. Hey, Bo. Love you, buddy. Pray the Lord's blessing on you and that he'll multiply your days. Can I do you too? Pray God will multiply your days. Pray the Lord to multiply your days. What about you, brother? Can I? Pray that God will bless you and multiply your days. I got a precious baby. Pray the Lord bless you and multiply your days, sweet one. Baby. 
May the Lord bless you and multiply your days. Honor. Pray the Lord bless you and multiply your band. We love you. Good looking, baby. Brother Frank, would you say a prayer over them, Brother Frank? Get you a microphone. Gave me one of the mics back there. You can see how organized we are. And when Brother Frank is done with a prayer for you guys, you can, you'll be seated, okay? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these parents' faith in you to dedicate their child to care, to raise and, and to nurture and admiration of you, Lord. And Father God, I just pray that you supply all their needs and you bless and protect them each and every day of their life. I just pray God's grace and peace be with you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. It's a blessing to see all these young kids and parents, isn't it? But you know, there's one thing Brother Joy left out that's even better than being a parent. What is it? Grandparents, grandparents you betcha. <laughs> Give grandparents a big hand. <laughs> uh, we want to take just a moment to welcome you. You going to sing? You gonna... Okay, we got one song to do. I thought we were through, Joy.
angels sing glory to the newborn king a baby changes everything a baby changes everything 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 appreciate you being with us. We want to invite you back. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come join us here. And we have so many folks, we'll treat you so many different ways, you've got to like one of them. So, invite you back. Next Sunday, listen, next Sunday, our children will be doing their Christmas program. So we want to invite everyone back next Sunday. There will not be Sunday school. Church services will start at 1030. All the kids need to be here at 915 to get dressed and get ready for the program. So kids, you need to be here at 9.15. We'll begin at 10.30. Just a couple of announcements this week. There will be no Wednesday night supper this week because of Christmas week. And then Thursday, uh, we have our senior lunch and we'll be at 11 a.m. We want to invite everyone out for that, okay? Any real quick announcements I may not know about? Let's stand and be dismissed this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and Lord, we do thank you for so many of these children that have been dedicated to you this morning. We thank you for their parents, and Father, we just ask a special blessing on all of those families that were represented. And Father, as we leave here now, we just ask that you go with us, bless every family that's here, guide us through the week. For it's these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We sincerely want to thank you for joining us today, and we hope that this message has challenged you and impressed you. We never want to leave you uh, in a message without challenging you to do something better for yourself and for your community and for Jesus Christ. We hope that you are impressed to take Jesus at His word. And if you have made a decision to follow Jesus, we would like to hear from you. We want to know about it. Would you be willing to contact us and look at our website, look at our email, and send us a message and let us know your story. We want to share your story with the rest of the family of New Life Church. Remember, making Jesus Lord of your life is the absolute greatest decision that you will ever make. So until we meet again, come back right here as we exalt Jesus, equip the believer, and evangelize our world.